In this episode, we're going to talk about ball joint bearings, and particularly the different types of bearings used today. Now, the classic construction of a ball joint was once metal on metal, where they literally used either a piece of stamp metal or milled metal as the bearing. Unfortunately, this design had a short service life at a time where the expectation was things were built to last. So most of the industry moved away from metal on metal bearings and adopted a sintered metal bearing. Sintered metal bearings proved to be durable, reliable, and they could stand the test of time. That's true, Victor. But in the last decade, I think we've seen vehicle manufacturers implement more of this polymer or plastic bearing. Why would they do that? Can you shed any light on that? Well, there are two main reasons. One is to save on cost, and two is to save on weight. So, Victor, they've achieved their cost and weight savings, but are there any challenges with polymer bearings? Yes, for example, plastic bearings do not do well in a high heat environment. Heat can eventually cause the polymer bearing to soften and break down, and this can be especially concerning with some of today's suspension designs. You see, in order to get as much performance and handling out of today's vehicles, engineers are placing the pivot points, in this case the ball joints, as close to the center line of the wheel as possible. This often puts the ball joint close to hot components like the brake rotor. So just to validate what we're saying, we can see the ball joint here on this control arm and the OE manufacturers, what they do is the brake rotor is right here and sometimes they have to cut a piece out of that heat shield so that this control arm can be mounted. Now here's the challenge. You have an aluminum control arm, a high heat source in the brake rotor, and you have a plastic bearing inside. So this high heat from the aluminum of the control arm, a great conductor of heat is aluminum, it melts that uh, ball joint and that bearing inside that ball joint and it will cause it to uh, fail prematurely. Exactly. Sintered metal bearings are a much better option in these situations since they are not affected by heat. They can also handle higher loads and they're usually greasable, which leads to a much longer service life. So let's talk a little bit more about this, Victor. What exactly, because I think it's important that people understand this, what exactly is a sintered metal bearing? Well, Scott, sintered metal bearings begin their life as a combination of powdered metals like iron, copper, and zinc, just to name a few. The powders are then mixed and pressed into the desired shape, but at this point, the bearing is still very brittle and will crumble easily. To harden the bearing, it's pressed passed through a sintering oven where the powdered metals melt together, leaving small pores between the fused particles. This process provides us with an extremely hard and durable bearing that remains porous. This porosity is a great advantage as it allows the grease to permeate the bearing, giving it the ability to self-lubricate throughout its entire service life. There's no doubt, Victor, that sintered metal bearings, they are durable and they're heat resistant and they're self-lubricating and are clearly the optimal choice when choosing a ball joint bearing. 